Good morning and welcome everyone. When I realized that today was Super Bowl Sunday, I was reminded of a statistic that I heard a few days ago. Apparently 90% of Americans are excited to watch the Super Bowl tonight. The other 10%, of course, are us Buffalo Bills fans. <laughs> I also wanted to remind everyone that we're having a potluck at Fellowship today and everyone is welcome to come. Uh, the peace of Christ be with you. Our call to worship this morning is inspired by Psalm verses 1 to 6 in chapter 50. God shouts earth and welcomes the sun in the east. God blazes into view. Starbursts of fireworks go before God.
Relinquishing the mic, now you're in trouble. Hello. So today, we're gonna talk about names, all right? So, because we don't know each other, right? So, do you know this man's name? Papa. Very good. So Papa is right here. Do you know this little girl's name? What's her name? Emmy. Hi, Emmy. It's nice to meet you. Play. Oh, very good. I didn't have to guess as far as Penny. Henry. Felicity. Beautiful. That was excellent. You have wonderful names. Do you all know where your names come from? Very good. That's absolutely right. Our names come from our parents. And when we're baptized, Here's what happens. Do you all remember when you were baptized? Right. It's hard to remember then because some of us were very young, right? In some traditions, we baptize babies. In some traditions, we baptize grown-ups. But when we're baptized as babies, it's tough to remember what happened. But two things happened that I want to remind you about. One is you got wet. Yeah, you got wet, just like swimming right? You got wet. And how come you got wet? You got wet because one, 
we get wet every day, right? Most of us, how many of you take baths? Oh, actually, don't tell me. Um, <laughs> sorry. I don't want to know because I have an eight-year-old, so no. Um, so we often take baths, some, some more than others. Um, we often take baths, and it's a way for us to get clean, but we're also in the water every day. Like the swimming pool, very, very good. We're in the water every day, and so every time we touch water, we can remember our baptism. And every time somebody says our name, we can also remember our baptism, because when we said your name during baptism, we reminded all of these people out here. See all these people? You don't know them all, and that's okay. You know your grandma, thank goodness. Well, just look at your grandma. That's the important one. So once they learned your name, you became their brother or sister. You became part of their family. Two brothers? So it's you, two brothers, became part of this huge, huge family. Amazing. Amazing. And you have one sister. That's great. And you and your sister. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent identification. The four, oh my gosh. It's incredible. So all of the brothers and sisters become part of this big family that's part of God's family. So every time you brush your teeth or wash your hands or take a bath or wash your face, you touch water or take a drink. And remember, when you do that, you want to remember that God loves each one of you. God knows your name, Emmy, and Ripley, and Papa, and Henry, and wait, Felicity, and wait, Penny. And not only does God know your name much better than I do, but God loves you and is glad, and he made you and is glad you're part of his family. So let's say a prayer. Gracious and loving God. Thank you for bringing us together, for knowing our names much better than our pastor right now, and for loving and caring for us and making us part of your family. Amen. All right, you can head back to Grandma if you want. Please join me in prayer. O oh God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah, and in the voice from the cloud, you foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Make us, with Christ, heirs of your glory, and bring us to enjoy its fullness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God is vaster than the night sky, brighter than the sun, and wilder than a tornado. Yet, God loves us enough to come to us in ways that we can see and understand, including Jesus Christ. Let us open our hearts to God, confessing the ways that we have fallen short of God's call to love our neighbor and love the Lord. We can do so knowing that our Creator, who is both the Lion of Judah and the Sacrificial Lamb, listens. Almighty God, when we encounter beauty and love wonder in the world, so often we seek to control it, to contain it. Forgive us for all the ways we seek to pull things under our power, for the ways we fashion the world and put ourselves first. We are selfish, God. We push aside your command to love in order to seek comfort. Heavenly parents, we take this opportunity to acknowledge our lies and our denial, laying bare our hearts and minds before you now. Stand up, take your mat, and walk, Jesus says to the crippled man he has healed. We too are healed. Transformed by Christ's redemption, let us get up and walk together. Thanks be to God. 
Having received this great grace, let us make our offerings of thanksgiving and praise. Join me in prayer. Almighty, on the mountaintop, you instructed Peter, James, and John. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. We are listening, God, and we hear your call to make the world a better place alongside your Holy Spirit. We offer you these gifts and our hearts alongside them. May they be blessed to Thank you, Henry, for your help. See, Mom, it wasn't so bad. I know, we mostly had to keep an eye on you. <laughs> Just saying. Our Hebrew scripture reading today is from Psalm 50. Verses 1 through 6, you can follow along if you'd like, although not exactly word for word, on page 597 in your pew Bibles. This is from The Message, a translation by Eugene Peterson. The God of God, it's God, speaks out, shouts, earth, 
welcomes the sun in the east, farewells the disappearing sun in the west. From the dazzle of Zion, God blazes into view. Our God makes his entrance. He's not shine as coming. Star bursts of fireworks precede her. She summons heaven and earth as a jury. She's taking her people to court. Round up my saints who swore, the, swore on the Bible their loyalty to me. The whole cosmos attends to the fairness of this court, that here God is judge. Let us join our praise with that of the psalmist, giving thanks for God's enduring word. Our gospel reading is found on page 1055, and it is again a translation from the message, chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. Then Jesus drove it home by saying, this isn't pie in the sky by and by. Some of you who are standing here are going to see it happen. See the kingdom of God arrive in full force. Six days later, Three of them did see it. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain. His appearance changed from the inside out, right before their eyes. His clothes shimmered, glistening white, whiter than any bleach could make them. Elijah, along with Moses, came into view in deep conversation with Jesus. Peter interrupted, Rabbi, this is a great moment. Let's build three memorials, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He blurted this out without thinking, stunned as they all were by what they were seeing. Just then, a light, radiant cloud enveloped them, and from deep in the cloud, a voice. This is my son, marked by my love. Listen to him. The next minute, the disciples were looking around, rubbing their eyes, seeing nothing but Jesus, only Jesus. Coming down the mountain, Jesus swore them to secrecy. Don't tell a soul what you saw. After the Son of Man rises from the dead, you are free to talk. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask that you would open our minds to your word for us this day. We ask that you would open our hearts to your word for the, us this day and every day. This prayer we offer in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who is the word to each one of us. Amen. Well, here we go. From the valley near Galilee and Capernaum, without names, set in a fisherman's home, to the very top of the mountain. So much happens in Mark's gospel between these stories, it's almost jarring to hear them so close together. And I must confess, I am much more comfortable with last week's setting in a home than this week on the mountaintop. It could be that much of my early mission work repairing homes involved roofing. And I had to get over the terror of vertigo to keep the high school students who were up there with me safe and, of course, do my job, which was to make the house safer, drier, and healthier. It could be that I'd recognize I don't do roofing as much anymore since I've become a mom and a grandma and much heavier so that when I walk on the roof, it's more a test of how stable 
the decking is. <clears throat> than any actual roofing. And there's a constant fear on the part of my kids that I will roll off, since I'm the right shape, <laughs> and die, being old and round, you know. And I'm not trying to scare them. I mean, really, don't we all feel this way? Uncomfortable with the sort of mountaintop experience that some will tell in their story of discipleship? I know. I am firmly an ordinary means of grace disciple. By that I mean that my story of discipleship is firmly grounded in little things. The ritual of worship. Gather, hear the word, respond and be sent. Water, bread and wine or juice. Loving our neighbor through prayer or food, rides, hospital visits. A cup of tea or coffee. Books and more books. A shared breakfast pastry. I've had glimpses of the mystery of God in my life, but they tend to be pretty ordinary. Birth, holding a newborn baby, sudden understanding, art, music, a dog's love, a cat's purr, death. One of the poets I enjoy is a UCC pastor named Marin Tirabasi. And she writes this, describing the way the light falls in her sanctuary as part of a series of poems reflecting on the transfiguration. She says, I notice this, someone centered the center of the Bible, that would be the Psalms, on the crack in the communion table rather than the cross. Perhaps the broken place in us in any church is exactly where its healing needs to fall. And I reflect, Jesus went to a mountain with the five who joined him, stretching awkwardly as we always do across the chasm of generations. And Jesus let the shine and warmth fill his story, fill his cracks. In Mark, Jesus goes to the mountain, not alone this time with some of his disciples, not five, but three in this story, those early disciples, the rock, that's what Peter means. The twin who tried to take first place, Jacob or James. And John, also known as Grace. There, rising from the healing of a blind man that almost failed, Jesus had to do the whole process twice. And a terrifying prediction that they would all need to take up a cross to follow Jesus. God's kingdom turns Jesus inside out. The very love of God that is the core of Jesus that can change the world changes their familiar teacher into someone they can't recognize. Here's Tiribasi again. The scripture says his face changed. It says nothing about shining. Though I've always just assumed that was it, along with the bright clothes and prestigious ghosts. But all of a sudden, I'm there. And know what scared them enough to want to put a roof on it. His face changed. I see it now. First, the familiar face of Jesus of Nazareth, and then of a first century Judean woman. Then wrinkled grandparent, chubby-cheeked child, a face swiftly shifting in noses, lips, the colors of skin in the world, tattoos, lipsticks, false teeth. Never still for a moment, sometimes there are tears or a laugh. On the mountain, transfigured, three friends saw a glory as a kaleidoscope of the image of God. Jesus is then with the law and the prophets, the one who heard the still small voice of God and the one who saw the bush burn but not be consumed, the one who liberated many from slavery and the one who was at the end of the age. Tirabasi says it's often just a small detail in the shiny story about Jesus in the mountain getting to talk to folks who've been gone a long time. I would like Harriet Tubman, please. That Moses to walk and talk with me. I want Langston Hughes 
dreams deferred in a still small voice. Heck, I want Mark Twain, Shakespeare and Emily Dickinson, Susan B. Anthony, Cesar Chavez, and Rosa Parks. I promise not to hold on to these remarkable visitors. I gave up booth building a long time ago. And like Jesus, I also want my mama. And the disciples are terrified, as we all would be. And their response to terror is not to fall down, although that's what some gospels say, but to babble. How many of us understand that? You've already seen a lot of that today and want to stay put and build. Kiribati writes again, today I realize it isn't about trapping God or making Jesus fit my definition, but it is our desperate adultness of wanting to shelter all the vulnerable and especially children from dangers of the road ahead, from hunger and familial abuse, razor wire and dumb bombs, in Rafa and anywhere in the world. From the heating of the earth, the worldwide rising of fascism, we are as terrified as they were and we wanna build safety, not for ourselves, but for all those we love. When sometimes we are called to go downhill and face it all. As all disciples must choose to stay in the extraordinary, come down in the ordinary, they are stopped by a voice that speaks without words straight into their hearts, their minds, and their souls. Given words that describe the extraordinary, the mystery, the amazing good news that God's family includes all of us. Every child who gathered here and every child who remained seated. God's family includes all of us and surrounds us with love belovedness, and the ordinary steadfast resistance we all must engage with to listen to Jesus and not so much the world. Listen to Jesus, not the world. That's our challenge today. Post-COVID, no full-time pastor, smaller congregations, dwindling resources. We are told by the world we have failed, right? That's what they say. But the good news of the gospel is that we have not. Let me say that again. We have not failed. We have instead been claimed and called for this time and place. Nowhere else. Remember, the mountaintop experiences are meant to help us continue our journey. Be faithful even when faced with the cross, even when faced with valleys, even when faced with despair, to trust what we cannot see and often don't understand that incredible mystery of God's love. One last time with Tiravasi, she says, the insiders grab pitons and crampons, some spiritual version of gear, and start to climb, but the boys back at base camp see only a flash of pyrotechnics, faintly hear a man with no sense of rhythm playing a tambourine. Is he even related to Miriam? And a baritone mumbling away at Swing Low Sweet Chariot, but the voice of their hearts are aching for, and the wind just blows away. While they greet an endless rumpled multitude of needers, your healing is important to us. Please stay in line. And even after the Shiners and the Shriners return with their precious secrets, Judas and Thad, Tom, Nate, Andy, and the others are already the saints of the left out. Like any second January baby, only fourth grader without a birthday invitation, girls stood up for the senior prom Runner up for the new job, ex-spouse who does not get married again, all a loner at coffee hour. Never mind the rehearsal, they tell the rest of us. At the end, it will be one hill fits us all. So let us journey together. Disciples of some sort, seekers looking for something, broken people searching for wholeness. 
Let us journey together down the mountain and remember the love of God, the warmth and the light that fills our cracks, the kaleidoscope of God's image in our world, the conversations we have had with the past and can have now with the current saints, the desire and the will to shelter and feed and love our neighbors, and the amazing good news that the saints of the left out, like us, remind us the good news is for each one of us, each child gathered here, that we are claimed, that God knows us by name. We are chosen and surprisingly loved by God. Here we go. Amen. Please be seated. Gracious and loving God, we ask your prayers for our world, for the places in our world that are torn apart by war and violence of all kinds, cities and countries that continue to think the best way to solve disagreements is through death and not life. We ask that you would encourage us Encourage us to bring hope, to bring conversation, to bring love to those places. Gracious God, we ask that you would open our eyes to the needs of the world around us. Places far away and places close to home that are struck with natural disasters, that suffer from too much water or too little, that suffer from too much heat or too little, that are changing in ways that kill our crops, in ways that harm our animals, in ways that tear apart the very ways we have learned to live together. Help us to bring hope, to bring conversation that leads to solution and working together and to bring love. Gracious God, we pray for this nation where often conversation is a scarce commodity, where often we do not seek to listen so much as to form the next argument. We ask that you would grant us patience. You would grant us the gift of 
holding space for one another, that you would grant us the will to keep coming back so that we might truly hear one another into health, for we have so much to do for our children and their children after them and after them. Loving God, we pray for each person gathered here, for our children, for our families, and for those we love who are not right here now. You have heard our prayers lifted up, and we ask that you would help us to hear each other's needs. Look into our hearts. Look into our souls. Look into our minds and our bodies that we might offer one another healing and wholeness. This prayer we offer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A little more work to do. Okay, the United Church of Fayetteville Board has contracted with Reverend Beth DuBois to serve as a transitional per pastor of our church. Today, we welcome Pastor Beth to our midst and recognize her leadership for the special time in the life of our congregation. The Presbytery of Cayuga, Syracuse, and the American Baptist Church of New York State are eager to have the congregation do the work of transition in preparation for new pastoral leadership. Pastor Beth has been equipped to lead you through this process, which reviews our history and focuses on our future as a people of God in this place. To you, will you serve and pray for those people of God with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love, nourishing them with a word and sacraments and leading them during this important time of change? I will with God's help. To the congregation. I ask all of you now, people of the United Church of Fayetteville, to receive Reverend Beth Duba as the pastor and colleague in ministry, to join us in the process we are entering as a congregation, as she continues the words of bringing the gospel of hope and salvation, will you regard her as a fellow servant of Christ and work together in the ministry of the, this congregation. Will you? Yeah. Will you pray for Pastor Beth and honor her for their work's sake and all the things strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ? Yeah. Pastor Beth, by your statements of commitment and of Firm affirmation of the board and congregation of the United Church of Fayetteville, we welcome you as our transitional pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
And now may our eyes be open to the ways the Almighty reveals the divine. It may not be as grand as the transfiguration, but it is there in the whiteness of snow or the brown of mud, in the love of animals, in the joy of a good meal, in the beating of our hearts. Take time to drink in the wonder of this life and then go out to share it with others. In the name of the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, may we know God's blessing and be at peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.